Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hey Hi. There. Good. Good. So, fifth, sixth video we're doing? Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, so, I'm Andy. This is Pete. Hello. We have a channel called My Martial Arts Coach. We're also personal trainers, jiu-jitsu players, both are black belts, and both have competed in mixed martial arts and various other sports and martial arts over the years. So, today's topic is, I'm going to hand it over to Pete. Risk. Risk. Um, I was just thinking about this on the way in. Um, quite a common question I get asked by newbies mm -hmm. is, um, what do I do about mount? <laughs> because people get um, very <coughs> wary of mount in the early stages. Now, I think this is because there's a lot of risk there. When you go to mount, there are far more options, but there is a high propensity. Oh, he's yeah, just go again. Just adjusting the camera. <laughs> um, there's uh, if you go to mount, there is a high propensity to get thrown off, reversed, pop all the way back in the guard, and you're on your back. So that is quite a high risk moving to the mount. All right. Whereas if you stick in the side control, much less risk and you can, it feels good to earn that position. I understand that. But you're gonna have to risk it at some stage. Um, I think so. Yes and no, I mean, I see, early on I see white belts going for mount before they suddenly realize they don't have a hell of a lot of submissions there. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. A particular, well, this, this might be- There aren't that many submissions there. Yeah, there well, isn't. <laughs> Unless you know S mount and yeah, all that sort of stuff. So from bog standard mount, there aren't actually that many submissions. You know, cross from from just a plain mount, you have got your cross collar, and then from there you're going to have to start moving from the mount, and that becomes that's when the risk factor starts coming in, don't you think? Because you're moving about. So when you modify into that S mount, there's that risk factor because you it, it, people always get their hips wrong with this. So. I, I can go for cross collar in a stand, box standard mount. If you're fighting in a gi. If you're fighting in a gi. In no gi, you haven't got shit. Have you really? You've got nothing. You've got nothing. MMA is great because you can start smashing the face in. <laughs> right? But in, in gi, I think a lot of people's psychology is why the heck would I go across the mount just for a crappy cross collar when I can sit here inside and it's quite nice and I'm going to wear this person out and I'll, I'll get those nice safe I have the ultimate response for you. Go on. Points. Points. Okay. That's where I see Mount. If you're going to compete, particularly in Jiu Jitsu, uh, and there's points involved, then Mount is a really good position to mm. use. Mm. Um, and also it's it's a dominant position. You're, you're, you're controlling your opponent. So mm. Mount I like it. But yes, it still is. Unless you know some extensions to mount, mm. for want of a better word. So mm. if, if unless you know some some different arm locks, so Americana, Kamora, whatever, but Americana is very defensible. Yeah. It really is defensible. Um, and in the gear, yes, you've got some cross collar chokes. You might have some other kind of chokes. You might dive to knee on belly to, mm -hmm. to catch something. But <clears throat> yeah, it is. There is a fear because they because they've worked so hard to get to that con that that position, that mm -hmm. side control position, mm -hmm. and they've had experience of going to mount and then being bucked and rolled and, and everything like that. But really, it, it's you are right. It's getting that that risk and that fear aversion mm. out of them to go go to that position, start discovering. If you get bumped off, if you get rolled, and you end up back in your guard. Well, you know, work your guard. Because really, you sh where if someone is unless they're doing a, a big hip bump and ending up in butterfly guard, most people are going to bump and roll and end up in your guard, which is not a negative either. Hmm. But it's yeah, it's just positions at the end yeah. of the day. As as long I think it's about comfort of position. I think that's another thing as well. So if you if you're worried about getting to the mount go to the mount and discover what goes wrong there. Hmm. Then you'll end up in a position, which is guard, 
then you've got to be comfortable with guard. It's just one of those things, yeah. right? Um, what other risky positions or risk Not necessarily risk. Uh, it, like, so the other example, rewinding it, I just used that example because I keep getting asked that. I keep getting asked, oh, I don't really want to go to the mount. Should I go to the mount? Yes, go to the flipping mount <laughs> and get chucked off and end up in the guard. Yes, go and risk it. A, an, a less common um, question asked of me is about um, approaching the guard. So you see people dancing around the guard all day long at the, in, in the open guard and never ever risking anything to get that pass. And often, once you've got past the guard in a, in a frenzy, you'll, you'll cling onto that side control like, woohoo, side control, and you'll stay there. Yeah. So, uh, or, or you'll do the complete aversion tactic and just stay away from that guard and just skip around. And it's the same, it's same in all martial arts, it's the same in boxing. If you're just skipping around on the outside, you're not gonna, you're not gonna gain anything. Same in MMA, if you're not gonna tow in and actually want to land your strikes, you're not gonna get anything back. You need to, we call it action reaction. I need to invest something to make them do something back. Do you know what I mean? Like little tricks. Yeah, so passing the guard, <coughs> yeah. Passing the guards are funny. Well, <laughs> yes and no. Um, no, actually, no, you are right. I go with white, if I, if, if I roll with white belts, even, even quite a few blue belts now. Um, when it comes to passing the guard, I almost let them. Same. Because it's, they're not learning anything at all by if I start playing butterfly guard, De La Hiva, reverse De La Hiva. Yeah, I sometimes do that even. Yeah. Me. But <clears throat> they learn nothing um, if you just stop them at every, every opportunity. So, but yeah, it, it's making people, like sometimes you have to stop them and go, relax, calm down. We've just drilled a whole load of guard passes. <laughs> Take one of them. Yeah. Take one of them and Try do it. Try it. Try it. <laughs> or, or they end up in half guard. Uh huh. And they cling to you like a thing, like a limpet. Presuming that that is a, a good advancement of the without, position. Without them having an underhook in the top position, and then they straighten out their other leg rather than putting it into your armpit, mm. and they roll onto the hip, and you take top position. And again, and you can see them get so frustrated and they're annoyed they've done it, and then they'll almost avoid that position again. So I suppose that segues into half guard a little bit as well. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> passing guard, you do quite often end up in half guard. And if you don't pass properly, you're going to end up in half guard. And most people pass, leaving their arms miles out in front of them, and they give up an underhook. And the key to half guard, in my opinion, is getting that underhook of you're on the bottom. Yes, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I suppose that's another one, isn't it? Hmm. I, th I think um, risk also changes through the belt levels as well. Hmm. Like, you obviously, every belt level, you've got to ch ch check your ego, right? But what's risky for a blue belt is different to a um, white belt, obviously. That's hmm. why that, like, the fundamental question I get asked from white belts is, should I go from side to mouth? Yes, go to mouth. Um, Blue belt might be something a little more um, complex, like say in the half guard or something like that. Do I go for my A pass and then have to um, string off of that? Do you know what I mean? You've got to, you've got to venture something fully, and then see what happens, and then and then go off of that. Do you know what I mean? Um, for a purple belt, it's going to be sort of chains, chains of attack. Do you know what I mean? No, not at all. No. no. Yes. <laughs> no, I do agree. I just think maybe um, white belts should understand the positions better. So when I first started, one of the things that was drilled into me is, Andy, forget about... You've got some submissions, that's fine. You've got a couple that you really, get, you really like and you find success with. Yeah. Um, Everything else, like as when you go to pass half guard, make sure you make sure you at least get the underhook. You fight for the underhook. You fight for the underhook. Mm. That being that, that that key thing. Mm. When you get to side control, make sure you are controlling the head, controlling the hip. You haven't got your rear leg based out. You've got it based then your knee based the hip. Mm. <clears throat> and when you go to mount position, 
you've got a, you're not too tight you're not too high you're not too low you're not off balance you're not leaning either side you're in control and that's maybe what I feel mm -hmm. should be emphasised more sure. and that might actually sure. inoculate a lot of white belts to risk once they get to about six to eight months in okay um, I've just just had a bit of a thought um, you need to at early stages redefine success basically so yes um, you may see a brown belt or a black belt pinging and whizzing around, catching submissions, doing mm -hmm. fancy moves and stuff like that. You're not going to be able to do that in your early stages. White, blue, you know, purple, you might start, you'll start stringing stuff, all right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I can understand fully why if somebody gets to side control, great success. This is a, a really successful position and why you want to cling on to it. All right, so I, I can 100% empathize because the further you get away from white belt, you kind of forget what um, triggers your, your dopamine and makes you feel good about, about the situation. Okay, right? yeah. So when you start getting to the upper parts of jujitsu and sort of brown, purple, brown, black, you start catching submissions and that's where your sort of your dopamine hits up. I forget that to a white belt, passing guard is like, yes, woohoo! So you want to hold on to that, that you're, you're winning, right? Yeah. So you need to redefine that success in your head so you go woohoo i got my winnings but you do still need to bet you do still need to bet i'm using a real gambling analogy but i'm just that's all i can think of for this like, my, <laughs> i didn't I don't, you gamble. I don't gamble all right i gamble in jiu-jitsu that's it honest um so take that success of like side control and be like yes but then bet on something which you know you're crap at go to the mount get swept over and then at the end of the day, if you just don't look at it like, ah, oh, shit, I got swept off a mound 80 times, think, I've got my side control. I can get to side control God, effectively. If you haven't learned it within 80 times, it's really going wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. yeah? No, I know you. I, and I do agree with you. Work, work on your weaknesses and make those, make those the things that, that you win at in the end. But unless they understand the fundamentals of the position correctly. Mm. Which is, again, sure. this, this leads back into the teaching videos we've done in the past mm -hmm. and we've, we've spoken about, mm -hmm. and, and, and pet hates as well, to a degree. It's, you can say, okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna work on my mouth, I'm gonna work on my mouth. If you don't have, a, if you don't at least understand the principles of the position and how to control someone in mount, mm. um, it's, you know, you're going to have to learn by trial and error and that's going to take longer. Mm. So I suppose that's my outlook a bit on it mm -hmm. is, okay, that's my weakness. Mm. Deal with your ego, take the risk, yeah. learn it. Yeah. Um, and it's only ever gained through sparring because that's when that random element comes in. Yeah. You can drill the heck out of, um, you know, mount principles, getting your hips down, controlling their rotation. So that's, that's probably, if, to answer the question, if anybody's in their head going, just tell me what it is in mount, it's probably rotation, all right, and, and, and hip bump. If you can control those things in mount, then you're, you're, you're yeah. pretty set, really. And also if being you can control their rotation. Letting them rotate so you catch their back. Yeah. That's the other one. Yeah, Flo I call that like a yeah. floating mount. Like so surf, you... surf there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, spazzy moment. So if you can, you can, you can get all those principles. Like, look, I just told you in a video, that's what you need to control. But unless you go, firstly, drill it, and then put it into live sparring and feel how that feels with a fully resisting opponent trying to chuck you off and rotate. You'll never ever cap, you'll never understand the principle unless you go there into the into the big wave and find out like what's going on. Yeah, and trying it on different people, different yeah. belt grades. That's the other one. Yeah, try try and mount someone who's and can control mount and keep it on someone who's three four stone heavier than you, or if you want it in kilos, twenty kilos heavier than you. Mm -hmm. I'm probably wrong there, but anyway. They hate it, and also, yeah. <laughs> if, if somebody is bigger, if somebody is bigger than really you, it's really difficult, and you can get pressure down on them. They're they're having to carry their own weight. But it's also sucks. the case of some people who are that big, mm. and you're that much smaller than them. Mm. You can't keep them in mount. Yep, you that's must the move. other one. Yeah, you you must have to be willing. So people hold positions rather than flow from position, 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 position. People, as you said, get psyched off. They hold it. Mm. White belts, yes, must have it. And also blue belts. I've seen blue belts do this in tournaments. Mm -hmm. Get to half guard and just stall. Mm. That's common. Um, Very common. I saw someone get DQ'd for it, and then the person who won because <laughs> thank the you, whichever ref did that. No, no, no. He got bronze. <laughs> ah, 
because the other guy got DQ'd, yeah, which no, was ridiculous. That sounds about right. <laughs> like, that's a fourth position. Anyway, that's one of my arguments. Anyway, so flowing from position to position is being comfortable that you have to constantly change and move. Mm. So people get to that side control, uh, don't want to let it go. Mm. People get to mount, don't want to let it go, and they just rigid. Come up. That's, um, that's why you'll get chucked off. And again, because we, you'll hold on to it too we, much. Yeah. And again, because you've probably gotten got used to side control and go, hold. Mm -hmm. And you get to mount and you go, hold. And it's actually a different principle. Yeah. You've got to, <laughs> you've got to move. Flow with them. and move, flow and move as they, as they move. So as you improve, as you get more sparring time, which you're right, it is, it is about sparring time. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You'll learn to feel when someone moves. And a lot of times when they move, that's when you catch the submission. So you mm -hmm. holding on desperately to a position at all cost and then and also not progressing. So A, not progressing, they the, the other person on the on the on their back might not move at all. Mm. If you just totally keep weight, they might just lie there and be like, fine, give give up. And neither of you progressing that. Mm -hmm. The other side, if you give them a little bit of space, let them move, often they give you a submission or a better position. Unless there's someone who's really bendy. And they can get their toes, feet past their ears, then that's annoying. <laughs> um, what was I thinking? Was another point there. Oh yeah. Um, so that's something which you will gain over time as well, is knowing when to move and knowing when to pin. So that's uh, two principles which I would say I've ebbed and flowed between. Is one stage in my jiu-jitsu very pin heavy. Okay, so that is kind of your, your white belt stage. You, you, you get to a position, you hold it, you take yes. your earnings and you'll pin a lot. Okay, in blue belt, you start venturing a little more and you start, you start moving between, but you're still quite, um, I'd say, rigid and, and want to hold on to stuff. Purple, I went probably too much the other way, too flowy, all right? And okay. you see a lot of this when you see a lot of um, Instagram posts where people are flowing. <laughs> And somebody just needs to just like stay still and that will never ever work. I just just told you one there. When all that, that flow stuff happens and they're all over the place, have yes. you noticed they always end up in an overparter? <laughs> <laughs> it's true, they isn't it? They always end up in an overparter. It's always because it's a flashy move. You never see them end up in a guillotine. No. You never see them end up in a, um, so in a that's, bow and arrow. So that's not necessarily just like a straight up criticism because that's, that is something in your growth and journey that you must start to do to start yeah. untightening that, what is a very rigid base. But, but I've come sort of almost full circle. When I got to sort of black belt and, and, and late brown, I really um, honed in on utilizing pins again and, and controlling somebody and making it grim. Like things like knee on belly, belly. shoulder pressure, um, disgusting hip pressure from mount. So, and then knowing when I'm going to get chucked, switch back into that flowing movement again. So you, you, you've got to take both. So I think white and blue, you, you will be rigid. So try and think about undoing it. Purple, you're probably, by the end of your purple, you're going to be too fluid almost, I'd say. Not necessarily, everybody is it's their own journey. Yeah. But that was certainly, for, for me, that's how it, it, it came around. I, I've started reusing old school, um, wrestling pins and judo holds again because I've, I forgot about the benefit of them of being able to just literally hold an opponent down yeah I find that's more to do with controlling the other person so sure I don't want if I um, and, and again <coughs> when you say pinning and using using pins using different um, positional control mm. and stuff like that well let, let's take it back a Back to competing. Mm -hmm. How long do you need to pin someone in a set position to gain points? It's like three seconds or something. Two to three right. seconds. Yeah. Depending on the referee, got the depending one. if they like you or don't like you. Or <laughs> it should you're, be about three seconds. Or you're competing against one of their students. That's happened to me a few times where I'm staring at the referee <laughs> for five seconds in neon belly, bananaing his student. Look at him go, are you gonna give me the points? No? Happens. Fine. Keep punishing. Happens. Um, but that's where all that pinning stuff and that, that being willing to move comes in. So you get to a position, control. You've established control. That's part of what Jiu Jitsu is, controlling another human on the floor. Mm -hmm. Great, you've done that. Now progress to another position. 
Mm. Progress to a more dominant position. Mm. Mount. Mm. From there, where do you prog- where's the obvious progress- progression from? You've got some submissions. Could be arm bars. Could be different arm locks. Could be kimuras. Wherever you go, could be chokes. Gi or no gi, depending. Well, you haven't really got much gi. No gi, sorry. But you're then looking at, okay, where do I go from here? Well, you flow around them. You let the other person do things so you can end up in a better position. So, yeah. oh, you've got mount. Yeah. Oh, you let them give their back. Then yeah. you've got back mount. Guess what? That's more points. Then you put your hooks in. Then you've caught, that, caught their back. Again, you control that for a moment, for, you know, two, three seconds. You get more points. Yeah. I've got a question for you, though. Um, we talk about MMA as well. Okay. So, um, in jiu-jitsu, there's no, obviously, no threat of strikes. No. Okay. So... I'm gonna th- I'm gonna th- chuck a scenario at you and see if you, you you would agree with this or whether you'd say or whether you would would risk this. This is maybe a personal thing. If you're inside, mm-hmm. you could hammer fist their nose to a sort of a nice flat shape, um, quite a lot, um, without having to risk going to the mat and getting chucked off and somebody ground and pounding you and, and reversing. Okay. Um, is that like the same sort of thing? You, you, you know, you're so comfortable with your, your side control, you'd happily sit there. Because I know there's, there's, it's like Khabib, he will just sit in the guard, half guard, and pound your face yeah. in, and there's there's minimal risk for him and big reward. There's, but if you get to the mount and you can rain down strikes, it, that that shape to a referee looks really bad. Yes. They're going to be more inclined to stop that fight. Okay, so the problem with ground and pound from the half guard position is if you have an underhook and you're in top position, you can't really rain down too much in so a powerful way. You, yeah, you can't, and people can turn their head, and it, it doesn't. And very few referees are going to stop for that unless the person's sure. really cowering down. Sure. The other issue you've got is they, if they have the underhook, you could be giving up your back. You could be swept really easily, particularly in MMA because they can start. They, you're trying to punch them. You're off balance. You've got no base. Mm. So. The trick with mixed martial arts and the ground and pound position, particularly from say the half guard position, guard actually isn't so bad. Guard you can you're a bit freer. You can, you? Yeah, you're a bit freer to do stuff as long as you don't lean over your opponent because then you're you're, you're you've got it's all about base. That's interesting. So from half guard with ground and pound, you actually want to avoid the underhook overhook position. And actually, even if they, if they knee shield, you can sit on their knee, you can sit on their thigh. Mm-hmm. It'll buy you five six seconds of just uninterrupted pain for them <laughs> um, because you can really go for it. Mount, I actually think, is a very good position for mixed martial arts because of elbows. I can drop (laughs) elbows from the sky, fully posture up, and guess what? What's the the only thing they're going to be doing? This, or they're going to give their back. At which point you flatten them out, and then you finish with ground and pound again. Uh, Unless you're gassed, which once happened to me, and I flattened the guy twice, and I was couldn't finish it but anyway so mount for mixed martial arts amazing position as long as you don't get tied up in arm fighting and trying to submit you get mount you go you just play the bongos on the head <laughs> and that's the only way i can say it okay i think that's that's answered my question about risk do you have any other things where you, about risk in general in in even just in combat sports just in general um, Anything spring to mind? Or we fresh out? Okay, no, people's aversion to striking. Right. Um, because and risk, we're talking about risk, we, we, we've we both done quite a lot of striking. Mm. I still compete in striking, even though I'm an MMA guy. I will be fighting in Muay Thai. But, um, cross-training. So, some jiu-jitsu people who just come for fun and that's what they want to do or some MMA people and they see the Thai class happening and they look at them like, oh my god or they see boxing classes happening in the gym whatever there is an element that really you should possibly dabble in that a little bit you have to. because what you've got to look at the primary reasons why you're training in jiu-jitsu are you doing it just 100% for a hobby or are you doing it, doing it so you feel a bit more confident and you've got a little bit of sense of self-defense and how to defend yourself part of that part of that self-defense or that being able to defend yourself is learning how to strike even if you're not going to strike if you ever got an answer you've made a conscious choice and I don't want to hit somebody Mm. um, because the risks are just way way too much legal whatever it is 
if you, at least you understand the concept of, and you're comfortable with punches coming towards you, yeah. then you're able to change level, take the other person down. You're able to slip, you're able to move. You understand the distance at where you're going to get punched in the face. Yeah. And you're not just going to freeze up and be like, oh my God, chin in the air. Mm. Getting it, like, you see that so often. This is the, it, we're slowly going towards the sport jiu-jitsu versus MMA debate. But I, I like, I like, no, no, I'd yeah, like, I like fear. that. I'm, I think we're both kind of in agreement with that, that we, you, you've got to keep those skills sharp. I've, I've actually started doing boxing ones-to-ones because I felt that my striking was getting a little too... Um, yeah, we need sparks. Rusty, I was going to say sparks crap. And striking, so. Yes, we do. Uh, um, but <laughs> I, I, I'm feeling that my striking has gotten eroded because I've done so much sport jiu-jitsu. I, I forget that you know people can rain down strikes in guard. And by the way, we don't mean do striking in a gi. Don't don't do that. Doesn't no. especially not a jiu-jitsu gi for no. goodness' sake. You found that out with Sakuraba and Pride. Didn't yeah, you? it doesn't work. It really doesn't work. Um, but yeah, the, the other side of that is go find out what it's like to have somebody punch it. Get it lot. Okay, you need to find a good, this is why we're here. You need to find a good coach. It doesn't have to be us. Okay. But you need to we find to a us. decent coach who will look after you and has the interest of putting pressure on you and making you adapt. Stress you know, plus recovery equals adaptation. Exactly. Right? If you just go in and you have some crap coach who just says, yeah, just box each other, you will not learn a damn thing. You'll go, come out concussed and go, well, I'll prefer to stick with the grappling. I'll just grapple somebody when, if they try and strike me. You need to know when those entry points are. Yeah, but it's also that, that there's that fear, isn't it? Because yeah, I have that with... Um, this is like a meta risk thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, risking, it is. Ri- risking, risking going in and learning a new art and yeah. stuff. You, you go to a martial arts gym to learn. For that, that's and, and also you should be going to learn rather than fight. Some people do just go to have a tear up. But um, by doing some jujitsu, by doing you're you're getting out of, out of your comfort zone and learn to risk and move around and all that stuff. And with the striking as well, it's it's a risk, but it's a risk that's going to be positive to you. And do you know what might actually save you from getting beaten up one day yeah and uh yeah i think we're kind of there aren't we yeah i think so okay i think that covers risk risk in in the whole of risk yep if you have any other questions for us put it in the comment section down below i'm going to do that presuming that there's comments somewhere there yeah or something like and that. uh or please, message us yes or message us directly and uh please like and subscribe and uh that is you know hit a thumbs up that's really good for us And also tick the little bell icon if you do subscribe so you get notifications of our next video. Okay, thanks very much.